Old Trafford to have housed the championship trophy since the Premiership started. And Blackburn Rovers, the last team to beat Arsenal before they embarked on their current run of 10 wins and three draws in their last 13 league games, not to mention reaching the FA Cup final. And as if to suggest everything is going Arsenal's way, Blackburn are without 20 goal Chris Sutton and without Damian Duff. They both picked up injuries at Bolton. Martin Darlene comes in up front. Jason Wilcox moves forward into his more familiar position and 21-year-old Callum Davidson, who cost one and three quarter million pounds from St Johnston, gets his first chance at left back. And as Blackburn lose their top scorer, Arsenal welcome back theirs. 19 goal Dennis Bergkamp returns after a three-match suspension. He replaces Christopher Ray, but the Gunners are still without Ian Wright, Lee Dixon, Martin Keown and Gilles Grimandi. Remy Gard continues at right back after passing a late fitness test. What a huge incentive here for the London side, knowing that victory would take them to within one point of Manchester United. But uh, don't underestimate Blackburn's priorities. They've had a dip in form, but they're still in contention for a UEFA Cup place. Here's Nigel Winterburn, who's close on his 500th game for Arsenal. So in that experience back for Steve Bold here across to Adams. Both teams playing a 4-4-2 formation. And Ray Parler lost possession there, and that's given Blackburn a chance to break. It's Vieira who got the tackle in. And in fact, Blackburn have already got an injury problem elsewhere on the pitch. But player's gone on because the ball hasn't gone out. It's Martin Darlene, actually, who's uh, already hobbling. There's the newcomer, Callum Davidson. Goodness me, it's a chance for Arsenal early on, and it's a fantastic goal by Bergkamp. In only the second minute, Dennis Bergkamp has scored for Arsenal. What an opening. Broke absolutely clear here of a Blackman defence. I think it must have come either off Anelka or Hendry. Bergkamp broke clear and drove that low wide of the right hand of Alan Fetis. And Arsenal off to a flyer. Well, he took it really well, Bergkamp. Three matches out with suspension, but he comes back to score his 20th goal of the season. goal has really stunned the home crowd here and what noise there is at the moment inside Ewood Park is coming from those who travelled up from London Davidson getting a foot in then it's Parler to Bergkamp Parler goes again here's Ray Parler for the chance for Arsenal oh and that's gone through and it's 2-0 and this time it's Parler Fetis got something on it, but he couldn't keep it out. Seven minutes gone, and look at this. Arsenal with their tails well and truly up. Parler's having a great season. He combines here with Bergkamp. He's definitely still on side when the ball is played for the return, and it seems to go up and over the arms of Alan Fetis here. Ray Parler drove it and in off the keeper to make it Blackburn nil, Arsenal two. And this is Championship 4, without a doubt, from the Gunners. There's so much assurance about the way Arsenal are playing just at present. That's a through ball from Overmars to Anelka, and he gets inside on show. Two goals against Newcastle, keeping Anelka in the side, even though Bergkamp is there too. And... Uh, here he gets in behind the defence and takes the shot early. Arsenal team, uh, in the best sense of the word, littered with Frenchmen. Here comes the ball to Overmars. The Dutchman, of course. <laughs> Back to Vieira. Arsenal almost at the moment pushing the ball about at will. Vieira. Uh, McKinley was stretched, Vieira just played that a bit wide, but it's over Mars. Oh, hands by the goalkeeper, 
just away from Anelka. Well, you thought for a moment Overmars had been driven too far wide by the pass, but Fetis was forced to make a save. And at the moment, it's embarrassing for Blackburn. Winterburn. Round the back, good cross. Hendry's header out for a corner just shows signs of well, you could say panic in the Blackburn defense. They don't really know what day it is at the moment. Two down, and it could have been three. This is over Mars, and the hand of uh, Fetis just away there from Anelka. And it's fooled them all. It's back to Dennis Bergkamp. Oh, it's gonna have to Parla. It's three. It's Ray Parler's second. The corner pulled right back while the Blackman defenders were all concentrating on the players in the penalty area. Well worked by Arsenal. Only 14 minutes gone. Bergkamp shot, pushed out by Fetis. Parler scores. It's Blackman nil, Arsenal three. Bergkamp shot, beaten out by the goal. Look, any one of three Arsenal players could have really followed that in, couldn't they? Here's Darlene. Davidson overlapping on the left. He's got uh, Gallagher waiting in the centre, the only one who is for Blackburn. That was quite a good run by Darlene. First sign, really, of Blackburn on the offensive. Arsenal captain this was about the best ball Blackman have played so far Billy McKinley spreading it he was onside just overrun it on his first touch Wilcox Petit looking for Bergkamp another ball that's really fooled the Blackman back four nobody reacted at first it's Bergkamp now and Elka's in there Overmars here now there are two chasing him. Sherwood gets it, but uh, earlier hesitancy here and more now. And Elka. Corner. Well, Hendry on the ground must be wondering what on earth's going on back there. And Elka swift to see the opportunity as the ball ricocheted back off over Mars. Hendry got a block on it just. Gold is in the six yard box. of night so far for the Blackman goalkeeper. No one hesitates to make comparisons uh, with 1971, especially early in a game. Here's Gallagher for Blackburn. Arsenal <laughs> fan will tell you, or those of uh, long memory, as the ball comes in for Winterberg to make the challenge and Seaman to make the save. Take nothing for granted here. Blackburn launched their first real attack. Tim Sherwood came in, but Gallagher got the header. But I was about to say that uh, with half an hour gone and Arsenal three up, this is the first time Seaman's goal has been threatened. You do get the feeling that this Arsenal team is playing with very much the same sort of belief as the one that uh, made club history 27 years ago. Is it really that long? Here's McKinley. To Kenner. Run down, run down. Good show to Kenner, but uh, Arsenal 
pushing up on the Blackburn Flats. Good play by Flipcroft and again by Sherwood. This is better from Blackburn. McKinley finds Davidson. Four waiting in the middle if Wilcox can get a cross in here. Gallagher. Oh, poor touch. He was trying to get Darlene in. That was about the slickest move we've seen so far from Blackburn. They were onside as well. Fettis here, looking a little uncertain against Anelka, but uh, able to deal with it. But Vieira was quick in on McKinley, and look how Arsenal are snapping up the ball in the Blackman half. Petit! Still waiting for his first goal for Arsenal. But, uh, this was another example, really, of where Blackman got themselves into difficulties by giving the ball away in their own half of the field. Brings it out of defence. Finds Dahl. Oh, that's a late challenge now by Vieira. That's another late one. It uh, takes Davidson out. And Patrick Vieira, who does tend to pile up the bookings, uh, has got another yellow card here. Oof, that is uh, really dangerous, that. Billy McKinley will take the free kick. Colin Hendry is forward. That was bold taking Hendry. Back in again by Kenner. Sherwood's there. But so were uh, several Arsenal defenders. Now Anelka trying to latch onto a foul. He's through. Onto Winterburn's pass. It's Anelka. He's fooled the goalkeeper. It's 4 0 Arsenal. Nigel Winterburn, a wonderful pass. Nicholas Anelka. Took it in stride, and what a cool finish. And in the first half still, this is becoming a rout. Just look at the ball from Winterburn. It bisects the Blackman defence, who are caught out for pace. And now look at the little dummy here on the keeper. Brilliant. And the finish assured. 42 minutes, and this makes it Blackman nil, Arsenal 4. Well, I'm trying to think of a Premiership match like it this season. The only one that springs to mind that I've been at was Derby nil Leeds 5 not many weeks ago. The way Arsenal are going, they'll exceed that. Over Mars. Bergkamp. Into stoppage time. The half-time whistle will come as some relief from the pain for Blackburn. Because Arsenal were rampant, ruthless and remorseless in that first half. Going three up in the first 14 minutes and adding a fourth. Bergkamp was really at the heart of everything. He scored the first, Parler got the next two, and then Anelka the fourth. And Blackburn go off facing something of a home humiliation here at the moment. And Arsenal enhance their championship prospects with a half-time lead of 4-0. Well, at the start of the second half, Blackburn here looking at their seventh defeat in nine games unless they can produce some sort of miracle, having been so heavily outclassed in the first half. I think the main task for Blackman here really is to restore a bit of pride because uh, Arsenal just took them apart.
This is a bit better from Blackburn. Tony Adams with the clearing header. And they've got a uh, man over on the right. It's Jeff Kenner there. And waiting for the cross. There are three in the middle. It's not a bad ball in either. Oh, and it's Gallagher. That's well taken. And Blackburn have a say at last. Kevin Gallagher, the scorer. And this indeed is his 19th of the season. Set up really by Jeff Kenner's raking cross from the right. And that's typical Gallagher. A really good strike. And even the England goalkeeper, David Seaman, couldn't do much about this. It's really well finished. And Blackburn at last have restored some pride. And with the score now 4-1, and no surprise to see the orange ball introduced because of these extraordinary weather conditions at Ewood Park. The error. There's a real carpet of snow on the pitch now, and it's Anelka for Arsenal. Overmars to his left. Bergkamp's forward as well. It's still Overmars. Bergkamp. He's clean through and Fetter's having to come. Oh, well, <laughs> there are a few of them braving it, you could say. Who cares about the snow when your team are tilting at the championship as Arsenal are here? Darlene looking for Gallagher. Oh, that's a good move by Black. Oh, and he's been tugged back. Penalty, is it? Martin Bodenham turns away. Gallagher challenged by Petit. And I must say from here, it looked like a penalty. This is Petit holding Gallagher, is he well? I don't know. I think maybe you're seeing it again. Martin Bodenham might have been right. Don't think it was real contact. He might have just touched his shoulder. And now Vieira, there's a, a ball on down this right-hand side for David Platt. Sherwood, Jason Wilcox, and Seaman knocks it up, knocks it out, and uh, keeps the three-goal margin. Blackburn had a bit of an opening there. They told me at Bolton uh, on Saturday to get the sheepskin coat out again, and I'm glad I did. Here's Ripley. certainly improved since half time but then they might well say they couldn't have got much worse Kenner Gallagher waiting for the ball in here he is it's a good challenge you look at Overmars oh he's shaking them off and he's away and he's got Bergkamp to his left David Platt moving up in the center Overmars again here the shots on is it oh the defenders on his oh it's still Overmars <laughs> and three defenders in the end finished up <laughs> surrounding him and scrambling the ball away. At least one of them was on his rear quarters there as they tried to keep pace with uh, the twists and turns of Overmars. Five minutes to go here. This is going to be 14 Premiership games for Arsenal unbeaten. 11 wins and three draws as Stephen Hughes comes out of the uh, substitute's bench. And are they going to give a rest here to either Overmars, I think. Yes, it is. Replaced by Hughes. And bear in mind, Arsenal not in squad terms at full strength here. Ian Wright, Martin Keogh, Lee Dixon, all absent. Tomorrow, 
they really thought that was uh, a humorous side to the end of the evening. A solid job at right back. Away he goes, and uh, Birdcamp is in the middle. David Platt's making ground from the far side here. And here's Birdcamp. And very rarely a technician as good as he is gets underneath the shot quite like that. Reme Gard gets a few marks, though. So that was a good overlap at right back. And as Platt came in furthest away, Birdcamp made the space but skied the shot. up offside <laughs> Manchester United won here 3-1 last Monday Arsenal set to win here 4-1 this Monday So it seems anyway, with uh, two and a half minutes of stoppage time played, although could they make it five? It's Winterburn. Bergkamp's coming in, knocks it back, David Platt. And 4-1 it finishes, and the headline made by Arsene Wenger's team at the end of this Easter football weekend is that Arsenal are within one point of Manchester United with two games in hand. And very much now in the driving seat one would think if they play like that Ray Parler outstanding Birdcap restored to the side Blackburn outclassed and even those shirtless ones who managed to put up with a driving snowstorm in the second half will go home happy to London with a final score here of Blackburn 1 Arsenal 4 How realistic is the double? It's, uh, for the moment, really unrealistic because it's just a dream and with dreams you cannot live. Uh, we have to be very professional and uh, think, uh, let's go like we did until now and don't dream, be realistic because in football if you lose realism, uh, you're really quickly down and uh, we are just, I think what is more important is that we enjoy, the players enjoy what they do together on the field, fight for each other, keep the spirit and, and try to be uh, serious and play well. Uh, I think the first half was probably the best performance I've seen in ten years at Arsenal. I, I would imagine. I think uh, you know three 0 up after what was it 12-15 minutes away at Blackburn was, uh, was some performance. We, uh, we you know we stuttered a bit first. Uh, second half, sorry, but I think first half was um, as good as I've seen. The team's on fire at the moment. You know. Um, we're playing so well at the moment. We just, it, it was unbelievable coming in half-time 4-0 up. Uh, we were surprised, surprised ourselves, really. Um, but the lads are believing in themselves and uh, we're doing OK at the moment. You've played both sides in a matter of days. Um, how would you compare both of the sides? Well, we played better against United and we didn't, in the second half today, we gave some indication of, you know, what a team we, we can be. But, you know, the game was all over here after eight minutes. We were three goals to nil down after eight minutes. You've played football. You know as well as anybody else that no team comes back from three goals to nil down, especially when they're playing a team which are fighting to be champions of, of England. The only thing we could do was to make sure that in the second half we, we showed some fire, we showed some determination, and we started to show that we're capable ourselves of playing some good football, and we, we evened the game out. But unfortunately, it was four goals to nil at half-time, so it was all over the game. Arthur Crooks putting the questions. They were 25 to 1 Arsenal for the championship in January. Do you have a bit of that at the, uh, at the time? <laughs> no, even if it was being 50 to 1, I wouldn't have taken them either. But I mean, it was a magnificent performance. Brilliant. Oh, the first half, it's one of those matches, you know, where everyone was at the top of their game, the movement, the confidence. All right, it's 4 0, but you know, it, they just ooze class and, you know, as good as 45 minutes as we've seen all season. Who have you picked out in particular? 
Well, I th you know, I mean, Steve Ward there, I think, has come in and done well when you think Martin Keown was out. You don't notice any difference at the back. Burkamp, you know, in the side, his subtleties, you know, gave them a, an early goal. But I picked out Ray Parler. I think, you know, the whole of the season, he's been very consistent. He works very hard. You know, this goal was all about his strong running. Burkamp, you know, he creates it because he holds it up, turns inside Hendry. He weights the pass perfectly, you know, and slides, and the timing means that he was onside. Fettis gets his hand, it squirmed underneath, but the, the movement and, and the running off the ball throughout the first 45 minutes was brilliant. But Parler tucks in with Vieira and Petit, we've mentioned them. Here, there he is there just knocking it you know, to Vieira. He, he does add that bit of aggression because you've got Overmars out on the left. Um, so he, you need that third person, and he always offers himself up. But he, he is a, a, a lot better passer, I think, over, over the last few months, mainly with confidence. And he you know, spreads the play superbly to, to Overmars. That, that was the sort of confidence you had throughout the side. Uh, uh, here, you have to say, Callum Davidson, who's, who's on the goal line and near post, plays everyone on side. And Billy McKinley, the other one there, look, he's sucked into the middle. He's got 10 yards then to go out to, to Bergkamp. You can see Davidson playing. And Nel Caron, and so when it comes off Fettis, it's it's take your pick out of the three, and it ends up Ray Parler, and he he says thanks very much. I mean, at that stage, you almost want him to pull up the old white flag for Blackburn because they must have thought, goodness me, I, I, you know, what's the score line going to be? What is it about the way that Arsenal are playing at the moment that makes them so special, in your view? Well, I think more than anything, I, I draw in comparisons to Manchester United. You know, in the days of Giggs and Kinchelskis, when United were starting to come to the forefront. And this year, with Giggs' pace on the counter-attack, they are a different team. When he's been absent, they, they've struggled. And I think Arsenal have got that now. If you, if you look particularly at Anelka and Overmars uh, tonight, you know, that counter-attack, when you're soaking up the play, here, here it comes to Overmars, and Anelka, he's only 19, gets between you know, the two central defenders, a better first touch rather than taking it wide, and, and he'd have been away from the defenders again but of course that was a warning because here you get Nigel Winterburn great ball over the top and Encho and Hendry after that they're trying to pull the reins in on you know because he's just saw surging away from him. even has to slow down get the ball under control and, and they weren't anywhere near him and, and tucks it away superbly over Mars again he blows hot and cold but he has pace he should have done better. This is at the start of the second half, 5 0 then, and, and, and who knows? But uh, fortunately, you know, he, he didn't tuck it away. Here he's now playing through the middle, let the ball run superbly. Galloping through, Bergkamp's out wide on the left, gets a return ball. Again, if, he, if he'd have knocked it a bit straighter rather than here, he probably would have scored. Then he tries a, a little few tricks and a five aside goal. But over Mars and Anelka on the counter attack, Bergkamp, Parler, Petit, Viet, wherever you look at the moment, they're, they're buzzing. Well, they were 25 to 1. Uh, they're now three to one on Mark, but you're still going with United. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to stick with them. You've, you've got my permission, Des, on the 10th of May to stick a custard pie in my face if they win it. But I'll <laughs> stick for United. I don't think it's all over yet at all. All right. Well, now to one of those scraps for Premiership survival. Who could have imagined it at the start of the season that mm -hmm. New Hand they're three to one on for the title? Derby, Derby move up two places into seventh and could be heading for a place in Europe. The other end defeats for the bottom three today, as you saw. Spurs remain just above them. Their next match is at Barnsley on Saturday. And Newcastle's first win in nine league games eased their worries.